our subject is about complex numbers. When you say complex numbers, we are going to tackle these six um, topics. The square root of minus 1, real and imaginary, and complex numbers. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, complex conjugation, dividing numbers, or rather dividing complex numbers, and we will also be tackling the another form of the complex numbers. So, when you say square root of negative 1, or, so I have here the, I will be um, showing you different discussion. We'll start to what we call the imaginary, okay? When you say imaginary numbers, that is when the square root of minus 1 or the square root of negative 1 is involved. It is square root of negative 1, it is being represented by i or in engineering it is represented as j. During my discussion, it will be called j. That's what we use in engineering. So how do we use the, the imaginary numbers? For example, you have question like you perform the it in the calculator the negative 16 in the calculator negative 16 is math error or you cannot solve it but in complex number we know that negative 16 is negative 1 times 16 then we know that 16 has square root that is 4 squared from your algebra so that means that is j4 so square root of six negative 16 is j4 you will be able to convert square root of negative 16 into j4 they are the same another is for example negative square root of negative 90 that is square root of negative 1 times 9 times 10. Okay? So, that is j. We know that 9 is 3 squared. So, you put out the 9 into 3, then square root of 10. So, the value of or the simplified Simplified of 9 square root of negative 90 is j3 square root of 10. There, in terms of i, when you use i, it is 3 square root of 10 i. It is after the numerical value in imaginary numbers. But in j, that's why we opt to use j. Minsan nahahalo yung i nagkakalito dun sa mismong numerical value. So, next, I hope that's clear. Next, what do we, when you say complex number, what is complex number? So, complex number is noted as J, and it is, it contains a real and imaginary number. The real is this one, And this is the imaginary number, okay? So, for example, we have j is equal to 3 plus j4. So, the real part is 3 and the imaginary part is the j4, okay? Or, j is equal to 5 minus j2, okay? The imaginary part is the negative j2. The real part is 5. Sometimes they are called, is also called rectangular. Okay? Rectangular form. Then, then we have different operations of complex number. As mentioned before, we have addition, subtraction, multiplication. We also have conjugate. In conjugate, there is also a modulus modulus but conjugate and modulus are different okay then we also have the division in addition remember our addition of binomials 
Anyway, addition of binomials when you were in your basic algebra like a plus bx plus c plus dx. Okay? So, in addition of binomials, you have to add those coefficients that has the same variable. So, a and c has x to the 0, which is 1. So, you have to add a plus c. Then, then you have to add the x with b plus d. Okay? So, the same concept for the complex number. Let's say we have to add 3 plus j4 plus 6 plus j2. Okay? That is 3 plus 6 plus j4 plus 2 simplifying it to 9 plus j6. That is simply the addition of binomials. The sum of these complex numbers. Another example, if that is 5 plus j2 plus 1 plus j it is 5 plus 1 plus j 2 plus 1 so that is 6 plus j 3 so that is the addition when it comes to subtraction remember subtraction is just addition of negative number or adding negative number so if the subtraction has the example of 3 plus j4 minus 6 plus j2 what are we are doing what we are doing is the negative number is being distributed to the subtrahend then you simply add that is 3 plus negative 6 or minus 6 plus j4 plus negative 2 so that is negative 3 plus j2 it is acceptable to have negative number if in the side of real and the imaginary so the answer will be negative 3 plus j2 for this example of subtraction then we have multiplication okay oh we go back to binomial in multiplication we are using foil Okay, that is first, outer, inner, last. So, if you have A plus BX times C plus DX, that is AC plus ADX or rather XAD plus BC plus BD. Okay, so that is the FOIL method. If that is negative number, it's just the same. Uh, there will be um, corresponding negative signs on these terms. So, for example, we have 5 plus j2 okay, times 3 plus j9. Okay? That will be 5 times 3 plus j5 times 9 is 45 plus 2 times 3 is 6 plus j squared 18 so that is 15 45 plus 6 is 51 plus j 51 okay plus remember in terms of imaginary number we all know j is equal to square root of negative 1 of course, if that is j squared, that is square root of negative 1 squared. So, that is negative 1. Okay? Then, j to the 3, we all know that is square root of negative 1 to the 3. There will be a 2 or 2 over 2 there. That's why it is, you will have negative 1 square root of 
negative 1. Where negative 1, we don't write negative 1. So that is negative square root of negative 1. And if that is j to the 4th, that is j squared plus 2. Or simply, to j to the 4th is equal to 1. Okay? So therefore, this j squared will become negative 1 times 18. So that will be 15 simplifying that is 15 minus 18 so that is negative 3 plus j 51 so that is the multiplication so ma'am what if multiplication of different binomial uh, i mean different sign binomial yung isa positive yung isa negative you can still follow the foil method let's say 5 plus j2 times 3 minus j9. It will be 5 times 3 plus j negative 45 from 5 multiply here. Then j2 times 3. So that is 6. Then as you can see here, positive and negative it will be negative j squared 18. And so simplifying that is 15 minus j 39. Is the addition correct or subtraction correct? Then j squared is negative 1 times negative that is positive plus 18. Simplifying that it will be 15 plus 18, 33 minus j 39. Is the addition correct? So that is the multiplication. Then we have complex conjugate. When you hear complex conjugate, that means you are getting the negative part, the imaginary part in its uh, reverse sign. If you have conjugate, if the number is 5 plus j2, its conjugate will be 5 minus j2. Okay? If that is 3 plus j9, it will be 3 minus j9. If that is 1 minus j, that will be 1 plus j. Okay? The imaginary part will be on its negative sign that is conjugate now the part here is the modulus i have mentioned earlier it will be conjugate and modulus when you say modulus it is noted as absolute value of z when we perform square root it is usually there will be positive negative sign in front of the the square root so if you get the absolute value you're just getting the numerical value of that number here if that is modulus or absolute value of the complex number it is z times the say conjugate conjugate is sometimes shown as z to its asterisk okay so therefore, in modulus of this, okay, it will be 5 plus j2 times 5 minus j2. Then remember, in the binomial, here that is x plus y times x minus y, that is x squared minus y squared. Tama ba? So, we're just going to copy that form. So, it will be 5 squared minus j2 squared. We know that is 25 minus j squared is negative 1. Then times 4. So that is 25 plus 
4 which is equal to 29. So that is the modulus. That is the absolute value of the complex number. Okay, another one. Find the modulus. J is equal to 3 plus J9. Find its absolute value Z. So that means first step. So our absolute value of Z will be Z or Z asterisk. And Z asterisk is the conjugate. So that is 3 plus J9 times 3 minus J9. If you don't remember the binomial simplification nung kanina, you can FOIL, that is 3 squared minus J27 plus J27 minus J squared 81. 9 times 9 is 81. 4, 9 squared. So, that is 3 times 3 is 9. Cancel. So, that is negative 1, then 81. So, that is 9 plus 81 equal to 90. Is my computation correct? So, that is the modulus. You are getting the conjugate. Then, you will multiply it to original complex number. Then, the result is the absolute value of that complex number. Why do we need that conjugate? Because that conjugate is also being used in the division. So, in division, remember when you encounter square root as the denominator, you are going to multiply that fraction by that square root but in equal to 1. So, let's say you have 3 plus J9 divided by 2 plus J3. First step, 3 plus J9 over 2 plus J3. In division, you are going to multiply it by 1 but that 1 will be the conjugate of the denominator. So, that will be multiplying 2 minus J3. Then, this one is 2 minus J3 as well. So, that is simplifying. We know that multiplying of conjugates will result to the modulus. So, that is 2 squared minus J squared 3 times 3 is 9. Okay? Then, 3 times 2, then plus J, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, then 9 times 2 is 18, La, minus J squared 9 times 3, that is 2 squared is 4, plus 9, then this one will be 6, then plus J9, because negative 9 plus 18 is 9, minus negative 1 times 9 times 3 is 27. Okay, so that is 13, 6, plus 9, plus 27, so, that is 27 plus 6, 33, plus J9 over 13. So, that is the answer of this number. 33 plus J9 over 13, or 33 over 13 plus J9 over 13. So, either of the two is accepted. Another example, okay, so that is 6 plus J3 over 10 minus J2 multiply to this conjugate 10 plus J2 then 10 plus J2. That is, denominator is the modulus 10 squared minus 
j squared 4, then 6 times 10, plus j 12, then plus 3 times 10, 30, plus j squared 6. So that is 60, plus j 42, minus 6, tama ba? Okay. Then, 10 squared is 100 plus 4. So, that is... So, 60 is 54 over 104 minus or plus J42 over 104. 54 over 104, that is 27 over 52 plus 42 over 104. 21 over 52. 52, 27 plus J21. Either of this is accepted. So that is the rule for division. Example 1 sixth of 5 plus J2 times 2 fifth of 3 plus minus j9. So, 5 over 6 plus 1 third, then 6 over 5 minus 18. Put the fraction inside. 5 over 6 times 6 over 5 plus j 5 over 6 times negative 18 over 5 plus 1 over 3 times 6 over 5 then minus j squared 1 over 3 times 18 over 5 so cancel 1 Plus, this is J, cancel, this is 6 of 18, negative 3, plus 2 over 5, minus negative 1, 6 over 5. So, 1 plus 6 over 5 is 11 over 5, then negative 3 plus 2 fifth. Minus J 13 over 5. So the final answer for this one is 5, 11 over 5 minus J 13 over 5. Or 5, 11 minus J 13.